The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Men and music by Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Great Day. human nature to put things off. But what about that job of cleaning and polishing your car? Have you bought your can of Johnson's car new yet? Have you had the thrill of seeing a new car pop right up before your eyes as if you had rubbed Aladdin's lamp? Maybe that sounds a little exaggerated, but I know you're going in for a surprise the first time you use car new. It's so easy to use for one thing because it cleans and polishes in one application, does two jobs at the same time. Carnu is a liquid. You massage it gently over the finish, and when it dries to a powder, you wipe it off. And there stands your car with its almost forgotten showroom shine. Now, if you want to protect that shine for a longer time and save on your car washings, you add a coat of wax. But first, do that double job of cleaning and polishing with Johnson's Carnu. Spelled C-A-R-N-U. It's the easy, labor-saving way to keep up the finish of your car. They say a well-groomed woman gives her tresses a hundred strokes with a hairbrush every night before retiring. And it must work, too, because McGee's horse, Lillian, is simply radiating charm and beauty these days. And here in the garage, giving their handsome hay burner the brush off in a nice way, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. My, doesn't her coat shine beautifully, McGee? Mm, it oughta. I got a Charlie horse in my arm from currying her. <laughs> Charlie, let me introduce you to Lillian. Lillian, this is Charlie. <laughs> you two horses ought to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> got to watch that, Lillian. You almost missed your cue. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Look at her wag her tail, McGee. She's happy. In horses, Mrs. McGee, that ain't happiness. That's flies. Ah, <laughs> oh, hold still, you big corn cruncher. Hey, Molly, haven't we curried her long enough? Oh, I think so. And she looks lovely, too. Though a little fat, I'd say. Yeah, she's hippie, but happy. <laughs> Hand me your blanket, will you? Kind of a draft blown through here. You know, I don't think this blanket is big enough, McGee. Her legs must get awfully cold. Well, what do you think we ought to do? <laughs> She'd look awful silly in long underwear. <laughs> Well, she does need a bigger blanket, though. Ah. Yes. Mother's it the baby that's told, doesn't she? Wudgy, wudgy, wudgy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, quit talking baby talk to her, Molly. <laughs> Next thing you know, she'll be wanting me to sit on my lap and listen to the three bears. <laughs> her to sit on my lap. <laughs> where are you? Who's that? It's Mrs. Uppington, I think. Ah, yes. I should have recognized that sweet voice. <laughs> I hear it in my dreams Every time I eat too much lobster salad <laughs> Now, nah, listen, she isn't so bad, McGee She's just afflicted with too much money <laughs> Old Dr. McGee could cure that affliction With one rousing game of poker What do you say we had in the old... Hello, Mrs. McGee, are you there? Out here in the garage, Abigail Now be nice, dear Okay, I'll kiss her hand and curtsy and if the old Oh, moose hello don't... there, Abigail. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? Hello, Mr. McGee. Hi, Abby. Get away from me, you big ox. I haven't got any sugar. Please, Mr. McGee. I did not come here to our... Oh, he didn't sugar. mean you, Abigail. He was talking to Lily. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, have you met Lillian, Uppy? Lillian, dear, this is Mrs. Abigail Uppington, the big splash in the finger bowl set. <laughs> I'll be shake hands with the... I mean, I'd like to have you meet our adopted daughter, Lillian. Oh, oh, Lillian and I have met Miss McGee, and I think she's very, very charming. Oh, I love horses. Uh-huh. In fact, I was quite the horsewoman in my day. They used to say I rode like a centaur. Like a what? A centaur. 
That is a mythological figure, Miss McGee. Half man, half horse. Oh, really? Well, which half? McGee. <laughs> Won't you come in the house and have a cup of tea? Oh, thank you, no, my dear. I just stopped by to ask you a favor on behalf of the Whistle Vista Reclamation Committee, of which I am chairwoman. Ah, uh, but you're such a confirmed chairwoman, it's a wonder you weren't born with four legs. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. McGee. Uh, what is the Reclamation Committee, Abigail, and what are they going to wreck? <laughs> well, we are putting on a campaign, Mrs. McGee, asking citizens to look through their homes for any material which might be useful to the government in this emergency. Oh. Old metal, paper, rags, all that sort of thing. Mm. Oh, here, here's a folder about it. Okay, Eppy, but I don't think we got much of that kind of stuff. McGee, how about the hall closet? <laughs> You think there might be something in there? I have a sneaking suspicion that we might find an ounce or two that we might spare. Uh, what do we do with it, Abigail? Oh, just pile it up outside. I shall have our truck call for it at four o'clock. Well, we'll get it at it right away, Eppie. Now, we're about through with Lillian anyway. Uh, <laughs> I must say, you keep her looking very well. I tell you, we curry and brush her for two hours every day, Abigail. You see our coat shine? Oh, yes, there is nothing like it, Mrs. McGee. Personally, I brush my hair at least an hour a day. Well, some horses need more care than others, Eppie. Now, <laughs> now, please. <laughs> Mr. McGee, I am not up. Uh, well, goodbye, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? Oh, no, you just called her horse is all. <laughs> Nothing to be offended about. She should be offended about that. It's Lillian that ought to be hurt. Hey, Lillian? <laughs> yes, does Daddy Ziddy Baby sink nasty old McGee. woman? Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, let's get out that closet, Molly, and get it. <laughs> Government folder Abigail gave us, McGee. Yeah? Listen, it says, In our attic, cellars, backyards, and basements are waste materials that can help make ships, tanks, guns, and ammunition. Oh. Salvage now for victory. Well, come on, McGee. Let's get busy. Okay. I'll be glad to get that closet cleaned out. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, open her up. No. You open it. <laughs> no, no. You open her. I opened it the last time. Yeah, but you can jump out of the way quicker than I can. <laughs> well, Okay. Here goes. Well. Yeah. There, you see? No cause to be alarmed because... Oh! 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 Just look at that, will you? Well, there ought to be plenty of stuff in here for the government, Molly. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's an old aluminum coffee pot. We can give that to the government. No, oh, but that's what I use to make my camping trips. Well, tap a tree and drink maple syrup. <laughs> This goes to Uncle Sam. Aluminum is a very important thing. Yeah, well, let's see. You better make three piles of this stuff we're saving for the government. Rubber in one, metal in another, and paper in... Hey, look. 
What? There's my old ukulele. Say, I never knew you had a ukulele. Oh, sure you did. (laughs) Remember before we were married how we used to sit in the swing out in our front lawn and I'd play the uke and sing to you? (laughs) Stuff like Red Wing and Pretty Baby. (laughs) There's Egypt in your dreamy eyes. (laughs) What's the matter? What you looking at me like that for? McGee, give me that ukulele. Okay, here. But it needs to be tuned up before you can... Hey! Hey! What's the idea of busting it up, Molly? Hey, haven't you got any sentiment? Not for this. Huh? The only swing on the front lawn in our neighborhood belonged to that red-headed Dixon girl down the street, and that wasn't Egypt in her dreamy eyes. That was Matt Harris. <laughs> the hussy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, oh well, I, I never liked her very much anyway. Honest? Nah, her swing squeaked. <laughs> Here's your old portable sewing machine, Molly. That's good for 30 pounds of metal. Oh, and here's a pile of old magazines. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, the police gazette. Oh, I'll take those, Molly. I, I was planning on joining the police force once. You I, don't say. Yeah. Well, hello there, folks. What goes on? Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Harlow. We're cleaning out the hall closet. We're sorting out some things that the government can salvage. Want to pitch in and see what you can find, Mr. Wilcox? Yeah. We got everything here but the kitchen... McGee, there it is. What? The kitchen sink over in the corner there. Oh, my God. Well, darn if it ain't. Well, that's another 20 pounds of iron. Well, I'll just go away quietly and leave you two to your memories and old umbrellas. I wouldn't want to... Oh, look at this. What are you mooning over that for? It's just an old tin can. Yes, but an old tin can of what? What? Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. But it's empty. That's what I love about it. This empty can means that Molly has been spared hours and hours of housework. It means that her kitchen linoleum has been tenderly cared for. That its beauty and luster have been preserved. Yes, but that empty can must have been around for years and years. Swell. The longer you've been using it, the better I like it. It just goes to show that once a housewife has tried Johnson's glow coat, she keeps on. Because it's so easy to use, saves so much time and effort, conserves your energy and your property. Hand me my hat, Molly. Where are you going, dearie? No place. I just want to take it off to Mr. Wilcox. (laughs) There's a guy who can really dramatize a tin can. Break his commercial little heart over a pile of junk. (laughs) Boy, what a performance he could put on at the city dump. You think not? You think not? Meet me there tomorrow at (laughs) 2.30. knew another man who was quite so sold on his job, McGee. Me either. Ever notice that little bare spot in the back of his head? Is he getting bald? No, his hair is just worn off there. He uses a can of glow coat for a pillow. <laughs> well, come on, let's get busy. We ain't made a dent in this stuff yet. Hey, where are you going, Mom? I'm going to put on an old house dress. This stuff is too dusty to handle. Oh. Now, you keep busy, dearie, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Boy, what a family can accumulate in a few years. <laughs> What's this? What's this? Ashtray from the Sherman Hotel in Chicago. Hmm. So that's where I stayed during that Legion convention. (laughs) Come in, come in, come in, come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, little girl. I'll come back later now. I'm busy. What you doing, hmm? I'm cleaning out the closet, sis, and at the same time seeing what I can dig up that might be useful to Uncle Sam. Oh, Hey, is Uncle Sam really our uncle, Mister? Who is he? Who? Sis, <laughs> he really is, sis. And nobody ever had a better uncle. Like most relatives, he annoys us now and then, and we squawk and complain, but don't mean anything. When we get in a jam, he's always in there to back us up, and when he gets in a mess, we we rally around. He's the only rich uncle in the world that his whole family hopes he'll live forever. Now get out of the way, sis. I'm busy. I want to get. Back. Those used to be my ice skates, sis. Can I have them, mister? Can I play yeah, hmm? Sis, you'd, you'd be welcome to them, except for three reasons. <laughs> they won't fit you, and they're so rusty they ain't good for skating anymore. And in the third place, Uncle Sam needs them more than you do. I'm sorry. Okay, mister. There's another reason, too. What's that? Hmm? I says, what's that? What's what? What's the fourth reason you don't want these skates? <laughs> That's it. I don't want them. <laughs> And why did you ask for them? Just to see if you'd give them to me. Hmm. I'd rather wait and have a good pair anyway. What do you mean, a good pair? 
These were the most expensive skates I ever won selling Larkin products door to door. Well, I bet you they can't be much good, I bet you. My daddy said so. Your daddy didn't even know I ever had a pair of skates. Well, he must have. He said they were no good. I don't... Now, let's get this straight, sis. What was your immediate paternal forebear dumb's comment regarding these mill pond moccasins? Say that again? <laughs> I says, what did your old man say? He said McGee's were the cheapest skates he ever saw. Wrong, <laughs> The King's Man and the Village Blacksmith. The village smith, they stand by the tree. The smith, the mighty man, now is he. He's busy as a big bumblebee. Free shoeing horses for society. He swings and sings as the horses, 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 horses pass. I can't still use those golf clubs. What was your score the last time you played? No, oh, I guess I don't need them anymore. <laughs> Here's your dress form, Molly. Thank you, dearie. Boy, what a load of junk. Well, the truck is way down on the springs now. Hey, where'd that driver go? He's out in the garage talking to Lillian. <laughs> Wonder he wouldn't stick around and lend a hand. Oh, here's the magazines. Hey, what's this thing, McGee? Oh, that's my old steel helmet from the last war. I bet the governor government will be glad to. I bet the government will be glad to get that. I made it. Well, I don't know, McGee. This helmet's got an awful dent in the top of it. Huh. I'll say it has. That helmet saved my life in the last war. Oh, get hit by a bullet? No, bumped into a stump. <laughs> I was crawling out of a. Oh, look who's coming. The trivia. Oh well, let's not get into one of those silly arguments with him, will you? Oh, come on. Let's do. Do him good. Hi, La Trivia. Hello, McGee. Good day, Mrs. McGee. What are you doing up in that truck? Oh, just loading some junk into it, Mr. Mayor. We just cleaned out the closet. Well, why doesn't McGee get up in the truck and let you hand him the thing? Now, you mind your own business, La Trivia. Molly's the kind of woman I always like to look up to. <laughs> Here, Molly. Catch. Uh, can I help? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're nearly through now. Oh, very well. I just came by to ask if you subscribe to Liberty Magazine. Oh, yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. But if you're working your way through college, we'll be glad to see you. Uh, I'm you. not working my way through college, Mr. McGee. I merely wish to tell you that in tomorrow's issue of Liberty, there will be a four-page article about you and Mr. McGee. Honest, La Trivia? 
As honest as it could be, I suppose, considering it's a family magazine. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll be looking for it. And I might have known you weren't working your way through college. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Mrs. McGee, I did work my way through college. Interfere with your college work any, Latrice? No, no, not a bit. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was particularly active in the Glee Club. Oh, well, here we go again. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you belonged to a Glee Club, did you, Mr. Mayor? That must have been fun. It was, it was. We had some splendid singers. I suppose they sang on account of being so gleeful. No. No, because they belong to the Glee Club. A Glee Club is formed for the purpose of group singing. Oh, I always sing when I'm happy to, but I don't have to belong to a club to do it, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I didn't either, Mrs. McGee. I joined the Glee Club because I like to sing. Uh -huh. But a Glee Club is not necessarily gleeful. You mean they were unhappy? Why? Why should they be unhappy? Why shouldn't they be? Well, they should be. I mean, no. No, they shouldn't be. What has their happiness got to do with it? Now, that's a fine attitude, Latrivia. Not to care whether your own club is happy or not. Why, when I went to high school... I am merely trying to explain that the term glee club has nothing to do with glee. Is that clear? Oh, I see what you mean. Like if you belong to the Elks, you don't necessarily have to give all your friends one of your front teeth. <laughs> that's exactly what I... Uh, no, no. What I'm trying to say is that a college glee club is formed of people who like to sing. Oh, mm. certainly. <laughs> you see, Molly, if you ain't full of glee, they won't take you in because... Whether or not you're full of glee doesn't matter. All that matters is whether or not you can sing. Well, it's the same thing. You can't sing unless you're gleeful. Well, how about Lawrence Tippett, Molly? He has to sing his concerts whether he's gleeful or not. Yeah, but how much does he get? Oh, up in the thousands, I guess. And he's unhappy about that? I didn't say he was unhappy. But you said distinctly that Mr. Tippett wasn't happy when he sang and I... Only but you had... said he had to be No, gleeful. McGee, I well, nearly I said... said that well, I... I'll just leave you two good people to argue it out by yourself. <laughs> and don't forget the Liberty article. A good day. So long, the trivia. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. But I'm happy at receiving thousands of dollars of performance. I, I never said to... no such a thing. You I did too, you know. I said that the. Yeah, you. Hey, what are we arguing about? La Trivia's gone. What? <laughs> oh, heavenly days. <laughs> Caught on our own hook. <laughs> well, let's get the rest of this stuff loaded, McGee. Okay. There. Yeah. Is this all the stuff, Molly? Any more in the closet? No, it's all out here, McGee. Fine. That closet was as empty as the threat to Joe Lewis's title. Okay. <laughs> but Uncle Dennis... Oh, said... Uncle Dennis, Uncle Dennis, Uncle Dennis. I get tired of hearing about that guy. When's he going to move out? Now, listen, don't you talk like that about well... Uncle Dennis. He's never done anything to you. No, except he eats more than Lillian and sleeps more than Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> He's a regular parachute. <laughs> no, you mean... You mean parasite, theory. A parachute is a big thing that gets full of air and lets you down easy. That's what I say. Uncle Dennis is a regular parachute. Oh, hi, Wimple. Oh, hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mr. Wimple. We'll be through here in just a minute. Hand me that last little pile of things, McGee. Here you are. Up. There, now that's all. Help me down, baby. Okay. Grab my hand. That's it. My goodness, what on earth are you folks doing? Um, we just cleaned out our hall closet, Mr. Wimple. We're sending a lot of old metal and rubber and paper to the government. Oh, that's splendid, Mrs. McGee. I went down this morning and tried to join the Marines. Oh. Sweetie Face went with me to give her consent. Oh. Did they take you, Wimp? No. <laughs> they said my eyes were too weak and I was anemic and underweight and overage and I wasn't tall enough. Too bad, Mr. Wimple. No. It came out all right. Oh. They accepted Sweetie Face. <laughs> you mean Sweetie Face is in the Marines now, Wimp? Uh, just as an instructor, Mr. McGee. Oh. She's going to teach them how to box and wrestle and do jiu-jitsu. <laughs> she demonstrated to them how to disarm an opponent, stun him with a blow on the neck, and knock all his teeth out. <laughs> Heavenly days, that must have been impressive. Oh, indeed it was. <laughs> By the way... Can you recommend a good dentist? <laughs> Go see Doc Cotton, Wimp. Tell him I sent you. So Sweetie Face used you as an example of how to treat an enemy, eh? Oh, she certainly did, Mr. McGee. And then the recruiting officer asked Sweetie Face if she knew anything about bayonet fighting. <laughs> and what did she say? I don't know, Mrs. McGee. I jumped out the window. <laughs> Uh, 
know, but look at me, standing here gossiping when you're so busy. Now we're all finished, Limp. Come on in and take a look at the closet now. It's a site for sore housekeepers. <laughs> we'll show you the closet, and then maybe Molly will make us a cup of coffee. Certainly, boys. But, McGee, I was telling you that Uncle Dennis... Oh, skip Uncle Dennis. Come on in, Wimp. Yeah. My, this is such a peaceful house. I wish I lived here. Or someplace. Oh. Well, now, listen, any time you want to come for a couple of weeks to heal up, Mr. Wimple, we'll be glad to have you. Sure we will. Here, take a look at this closet, Wimp. I'm proud of this. But, McGee, I told you... No, I, I want Wimple to see the closet. Now, look, Wimp. <laughs> Well, what in the... I've been Ooh. trying to tell you, McGee. I've huh? been trying to tell you all the time. When Uncle Dennis saw that bear closet, he moved all his stuff in there. <laughs> well, we haven't all got hall closets like the McGee's. But if you're looking for ways in which you can do something right now that will help your country, listen carefully. You can turn this spring house cleaning into direct aid for all-out production by very carefully salvaging from your attic and basement all discarded articles made with rubber or metal, as well as old rags and scrap paper. Rubber and scrap metal are most important. Twenty-nine pounds of old rubber will make a life raft for a Navy plane. Twelve pounds of scrap metal is half the steel needed for a small machine gun. That's important, isn't it? Sort out all discarded tools, old tire chains, batteries, pieces of pipe, anything made of metal that you can't use. Sort out old rubber tires, torn boots or overshoes, hot water bottles, bath mats. Sort out old clothing, rags of all kinds, waste paper and cartons. Send them to your local junk collector or give them to a charitable organization that's collecting such material. Remember, rubber and scrap metal are most important right now. Your government is asking your help. Make this spring house cleaning your special contribution to victory. Done, and you certainly have worked hard, McGee. I'll say that for you. <laughs> I'll say that for me, too. You look tired, dearie. Yeah. Say, why don't you go down to the Elks Gymnasium and get yourself a massage? Oh, I can't, Molly. The masseur joined the army. He did? <laughs> I thought he was way over age. Well, he is, but I guess the government wants any old rubber it can get. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I said, oh. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.